In a discovery that could shatter our understanding of history, scientists have unearthed what they believe is the lost tomb of Genghis Khan. Hidden for centuries, the tomb's haunting contents are as enigmatic as they are terrifying, raising more questions than answers. What are the haunting artifacts inside and how do they redefine what we thought we knew about the great Mongol conqueror? Prepare for a journey into the unknown, a revelation so shocking it has the potential to change the very essence of human understanding. Welcome to an exploration that will disrupt history and shake our foundations. This changes everything. The tomb of Genghis Khan has been an enigma throughout time, surrounded by myths and legends. The Mongol conqueror, famous for founding one of the largest empires, is said to have ordered that his final resting place be hidden and those who participated in the burial executed to keep it a secret. Stories tell how Genghis Khan diverted rivers and released wild horses to hide his tomb, making it one of the greatest historical secrets. Despite the tension between scientific research and cultural sensitivity, fueled by the Mongolian belief that disturbing the tomb would bring calamity, the desire to uncover the enigma persists. Although previous attempts resulted in disappointments, the appeal of solving this mystery remains strong. Archaeologists have explored ancient texts, satellite images and migration patterns to find clues. The recent idea that scientists could reveal this historical enigma was perceived as bold, challenging the barriers of tradition and culture. In the current era, turning our attention to the secrets of our past seems inevitable. The current revelation changes the way we view history, providing real evidence that challenges long-standing myths about Genghis Khan's tomb. This finding opens new avenues of academic research and presents a dilemma for Mongolia about how to handle international attention. On a global level, it adds a shocking chapter to an ancient narrative, stripping away folklore and forcing us to confront exciting but disturbing realities. A team of archaeologists, initially in Mongolia to study ancient weather patterns, stumbled upon the site near Birkin Kaldun Mountain, long speculated to be the tomb of Genghis Khan. The discovery, supported by advanced technology such as ground radar, metal detectors and drones, revealed an elaborate burial site, with intricate carvings and symbols of power. The decisive moment came when deciphering inscriptions that resembled ancient Mongolian script, strongly indicating that it was the tomb of Genghis Khan. News of the discovery generated great excitement, promising to change historical research and challenge established narratives. However, the discovery brought with it complications. The Mongolian government was consulted at every step due to the monumental importance to the national heritage. With the media converging on the site, Ethical considerations arose about excavating a place so linked to Mongolian culture and identity. The meticulous work continued for weeks, with specialized scientists and local observers. Periodic revelations fueled discussions from the academic to the existential. Beyond the artifacts and historical documents, the discovery was perceived to unleash unforeseen results. Experts in linguistics, history and anthropology were summoned, maintaining an interdisciplinary approach that never lost its amazement. They all recognized that they were part of something extraordinary, an effort that was rewriting chapters in the annals of human history. As archaeologists prepared to open Genghis Khan's tomb, anticipation was mixed with trepidation. Although they found impressive historical artifacts at first, such as swords and armor, what they discovered next defied explanation. Among the riches, they found artifacts made from advanced materials, seemingly out of place in the 13th century. Some had inscriptions and symbols in unknown languages, executed with mechanical precision. Experts could not identify its origin or understand its meanings. Additionally, DNA testing revealed unusual genetic markers, distinct from any known lineage. This added a mysterious and complicated twist to the figure of Genghis Khan, challenging our understanding of his history. Unusual ritual elements were discovered in Genghis Khan's tomb, challenging known Mongol traditions. Ceremonial daggers, vessels with unknown compounds, and engravings on celestial bodies created an eerie atmosphere. 
Was Genghis Khan part of a forgotten belief or was there something supernatural at play? A scroll displayed unknown landforms, and translucent stones with intriguing properties affected electronic devices. These findings challenge scientific categorization and our understanding of knowledge of that time. The key question, was Genghis Khan part of a more complex narrative than we thought? Reactions ranged from skepticism to fearful speculation. Some thought it was an elaborate hoax, while others considered the possibility of extraterrestrial contact. Although the most extreme theories were ruled out, the lack of definitive explanations left everyone baffled. Furthermore, the scientific data challenged the foundations of archaeology, genetics and physics. DNA analysis and radiocarbon dating were used, crucial to understanding the story. However, the results did not match expectations, raising more questions than answers. DNA from the skeletal remains showed unusual markers and unexplained genetic material. Radiocarbon dating tests returned inconsistent results, with some items older than expected and others of an impossible age based on their condition. The anomalies continued with the composition of some artifacts, made of materials and alloys challenging known metallurgical capabilities. Teams from various disciplines proposed theories without reaching clear conclusions, raising questions about quantum physics and possible new natural laws. This also challenged the conventional image of Genghis Khan, suggesting a more complex story with extraterrestrial influences. Domestically and internationally, Mongolia became the center of debates on cultural heritage, scientific ethics, and sovereignty. Negotiations over the tomb generated historical tensions, and the younger generation expressed opinions, driving cultural and scientific changes. Bodies such as the UN and UNESCO discussed the tomb's status as world heritage, addressing ethical and political issues at a global level. The controversy extended to archaeological ethics, possible cultural exploitation in the international market, and the intellectual property of technologies found in the tomb. In short, this complex discovery tested ethical and scientific rigor, revealing the complexities that influence our understanding of the past, present and future. Now, imagine if we told you that the disappearance of one of the most historic rivers in the world took place at the same time that a completely surprising discovery was made. An ancient river, which has flowed for millennia, has suddenly dried up, and in the midst of this transformation, the discovery of an ancient mythical being in the same area has emerged. The shocking discovery of Gilgamesh, the hero of Mesopotamian mythology, along with the mysterious phenomenon of the disappearance of the Euphrates River. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers join to form the Shat al-Arab River, which flows into the Persian Gulf. The Euphrates flows through Syria and Iraq, rising in Turkey. It is the longest river in Western Asia, about 1,740 miles long. In other languages, it is called Yeprat in Armenian, Parrot in Hebrew, Firet in Turkish and Firet in Kurdish. In Mandaic it is known as Praz, and in Mandian scriptures as Prazziwa in Ginza Rabba. The Mandaic scriptures view the Euphrates as an earthly version of the heavenly river Yardna. The first records of this river come from cuneiform texts at Shurapak and Nippur in southern Iraq, around the 3rd millennium BC. In Sumerian, he is named Buranina, indicating his divine character. In these beliefs, the Euphrates represents the celestial river that flows in the sky. The ancient cities of Babylon and Nineveh were located along the Euphrates River in what is now Mesopotamia. The Euphrates played a fundamental role in the development of human civilization in that region. Throughout history, the river has served as a natural boundary between different governments and empires, making it an area of great importance and controversy. The Bible makes several mentions of the Euphrates, both in the Old and New Testaments representing it as a powerful symbol of ancient empires. In the Old Testament, it is related to the Garden of Eden and the place of the origin of humanity. Furthermore, it is one of the four rivers mentioned as flowing out of Eden after creation. It also served as the natural boundary for the land promised to the Israelites, and crossing it was illegal at the time. 
From a historical and mythological perspective in Mesopotamia, the discovery of the statue of Gilgamesh marks a significant turning point in research. In ancient Near Eastern literature, Gilgamesh is a prominent character. It is mentioned that the kings of the east will gather their troops before the Battle of Armageddon in a place where the Euphrates River is referred to. The New Testament also mentions this river and says that it was dried up in the Book of Revelation to allow the eastern kingdoms to march unhindered. There are some mentions of Gilgamesh in non-cuneiform writings. A century after George Smith noted it, the flood account in the Epic of Gilgamesh remains an open connection between the Hebrew Bible and Mesopotamian epic narrative. Additionally, a manuscript of the Dead Sea Scrolls called the Book of Giants could contain the name of the heroic protagonist of Gilgamesh. As one of the world's oldest heroes, Gilgamesh could be considered the grandfather of ancient and modern heroic figures. The Epic of Gilgamesh, a literary classic that originated in ancient Mesopotamia, tells the story of this legendary king. The epic tells of the travels of Gilgamesh, a king who ruled Uruk, in modern-day Iraq, around 2700 BC. The recent rediscovery of this epic marked a crucial event. The advancement in our knowledge of the ancient Near East also changed the way we study the Hebrew Bible and the future. The dissemination over time and in various languages of the legends of Gilgamesh demonstrates the great interest that this character generated in the ancient Near, East and beyond. Fragments of the original version of the text have been found in archaeological excavations in places from Iraq to Turkey. It is widely believed that the authors of the Hebrew Bible knew the story of Gilgamesh and used this knowledge to inspire elements and contrasts in their own text. In 2003, archaeologists in Iraq believed they had discovered the lost tomb of Gilgamesh. He ruled the ancient Sumerian city of Uruk and was the protagonist of the first documented story in human history, about 3,000 years ago. This story, called the Epic of Gilgamesh, was written on clay tablets in Sumerian around 2700 BC. The narrative functioned as a memory of the life of this leader of Uruk, one of the oldest and most powerful cities in the region. It is possible that the modern name of Iraq comes from the ancient city of Uruk, although this claim is disputed. The story of Gilgamesh's adventures, his quest for immortality, and his confrontations with mythical creatures is told in the Epic of Gilgamesh. In 2003, a German expedition announced it had discovered what was believed to be the entire city of Uruk, including the supposed burial site of the famous ruler Gilgamesh. This place was surrounded by the ancient Euphrates River before its course changed. According to George Fassbender, head of the Bavarian Department of Historical Monuments in Munich, although it cannot be stated with certainty that it was Gilgamesh's tomb, it bears similarities to ancient descriptions. Gilgamesh is believed to have been buried under the Euphrates in a tomb built after his death and the relocation of the river. This story is preserved on clay tablets. Fassbender explained that advanced techniques allowed the ancient city to be discovered under the sands of the Iraqi desert. Structures were found that coincided with those mentioned in the epic, such as gardens and homes. Also highlighted was the discovery of a complex network of canals, possibly affected by floods that destroyed some buildings. This suggests the existence of an advanced system in the area, similar to Venice but in the desert. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers have a long history and are mentioned in ancient writings, even in future predictions. These rivers have existed for thousands of years. The Tigris joins the Euphrates and flows into the Persian Gulf in a region called Shat al-Arab, near the Euphrates. Together with the Nile River in Africa, these rivers form the Fertile Crescent, an area of the Middle East rich in soil and considered the cradle of civilization. Both rivers are related to Mesopotamia, a territory between them and part of the Fertile Crescent. These rivers are mentioned in ancient texts, including the Bible and Hadiths, in creation and in prophecies about the end of the world, which shows their antiquity. However, in recent years, the Tigris and Euphrates in the Middle East have declined due to human activity and climate change. There is a danger that they will dry out in the coming decades affecting the environment and biodiversity. 
Water depletion has led to the extinction of species and the degradation of habitats. Furthermore, these rivers maintain the biological balance of the area, and their drying has altered this balance. The drying up of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers has had positive effects on archaeology. Many ancient artifacts are being discovered in these rivers, including a city built 3,400 years ago. This occurred when the Mosul Reservoir, formerly known as the Saddam Dam in northern Iraq, dried up due to the ongoing drought in the area. This city emerged from the waters of the Tigris River, specifically from the Mosul Reservoir. Archaeologists have found ruins and artifacts from the Matani Empire era of the Bronze Age, between 1550 and 1350 BC. It is also thought that the urban center, containing large buildings and palaces, may have been the ancient metropolis of Zahiku. Although these rivers could be endangered in the future, they are still useful. Despite the risk of losing these valuable resources, we continue to access them. If water levels continue to drop, we will find more historical relics, but this will require a significant financial cost. Have you heard of the ancient civilization of Petra? The prehistoric Jordanian city of Petra carved directly into red, white, pink and yellow sandstone cliffs? It was lost to the Western world for hundreds of years. Petra was a prosperous commercial city and capital of the Nabataean Empire between 400 BC and 400 BC. C and 160 C, located in the southwest of Jordan surrounded by canyons and desert mountains. Although there are other ancient cities with impressive structures, Petra is the best known. The Nabataeans, who built Petra, ruled a vast territory in the Middle East until their absorption into the Roman Empire. Remnants of their innovative water systems can still be found in the region. Only 15% of Petra has been discovered and 85% remains unexplored. Petra's importance declined after it was conquered by Rome in 106 AD, and the city fell into decline due to earthquakes and changing trade routes. Tourists wishing to see more Petra-like structures should head to Mosul, Iraq, where scientists recently discovered a kingdom buried under a dam. Due to the drought that has affected southern Iraq, a group of Kurdish and German archaeologists were able to resume excavations of an ancient city in Kemian that had been submerged under the waters of the Mosul Dam Reservoir. The discovery included a palace and several large buildings, and researchers were able to reconstruct the city plan in a relatively short period of time. The team worked in a race against time, not knowing when the reservoir's waters would rise again. They discovered five ceramic vessels containing an archive of more than 100 cuneiform tablets dating to the Middle Assyrian period. Archaeologists also discovered rare red and blue wall paintings, leading to the belief that they were a common feature in palaces of the period. Additionally, several other large buildings were discovered in the sprawling city complex, including a massive fortification with a wall and towers, a monumental multi-story warehouse building, and an industrial complex. But the kingdom came to an end under the reign of King Tushrata, during whose reign the Hittites destroyed their capital city of Wasakani. Clay tablets were found in modern paper-like envelopes that were used to enclose cuneiform tablets in the second millennium BC. Researchers believe the cuneiform text belonged to a private Middle Assyrian archive and hope the discovery will provide important information about the history of the area. The excavated buildings were covered with plastic wrap and gravel to protect the ruins, which are now flooded. Any other objects hidden within the ruins must wait to be discovered at a later date. The ancient city of Hydra in Saudi Arabia looks like Petra and could hold secrets from an ancient civilization. Saudi Arabia wants to reduce its dependence on oil and attract tourism to increase its income. They have launched Saudi Vision 2030, a plan to make the country a global trade and tourism hub. The Crown Prince has begun issuing tourist visas and the city of Hegra is an obvious choice to attract visitors due to its architecture and the fact that it is virtually unknown. The Nabataeans were desert nomads who controlled trade routes and supplied spices and aromatics. Hegra was an important provincial city for them. The Nabataeans became visible in history because they became rich naturally. 
The Nabataeans prospered from the 4th century BC until the 1st century AD, and its territory included Jordan, Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, Saudi Arabia, Israel and Syria. Their identity was lost and Petra was rediscovered in 1812. The difficulty in learning about the Nabataeans is that they left very little first-hand history. Most of what we know about them comes from documents written by outsiders. Most of the remaining structures are tombs and much of the city's architectural remains have been literally lost to the sands of time. Despite their obscurity, the Nabataeans were ancient pioneers in architecture, taking advantage of the arid desert environment to their advantage. The tombs at Hegra have natural water pipes to protect them from erosion, which has kept them in good condition for thousands of years. The Nabataeans, who built these tombs, were innovative and creative. The architecture of the tombs is influenced by classical Greek and Roman architecture, but also has Mesopotamian, Iranian, Egyptian and Greek influences, creating a unique style of architecture called Arabic Baroque. The tombs have intimidating inscriptions warning of fines and divine punishments for trespassing. These inscriptions also include dates that are important to archaeologists and historians. In Hegra, the oldest tomb is from 1 BC, and the most recent is from 70 AD, which helps fill in the gaps in the timeline. There are 7,000 Nabataean inscriptions throughout the kingdom, but only a little more than a hundred of them have dates. Most inscriptions are short writings containing the name of an individual or a request to a god. Some Hegra tombs contain the final resting places of high-ranking officers and their families, who according to the writing on their tombs, carried their adopted Roman military titles with them into the afterlife. The inscriptions also underline the commercial importance of Hegra and the diversity of Nabataean society. The term Nabataean is not an ethnic term, but a political expression meaning that they are in charge of a kingdom or dynasty, and there were several types of people in the Nabataean kingdom. The tomb of Lydian, son of Cusa, is the largest in Hegra, but its lower third was left unfinished. Some tombs were abandoned in the middle of construction for unknown reasons. A new chapter in Hegra's history has just begun, as travelers now have easy access to the site for the first time. It used to be difficult to visit Hegra. Only a few Saudis and foreign terrorists could do so with special permission. Now, anyone can buy a ticket online for $25 and visit seven areas by buses. Apart from Hegra, there are other nearby heritage sites, such as the ancient city of Dayton and Jabalik Mekanyan, which are open to visitors. Alula's city is also open for tourism and hopes to attract 2 million tourists per year by 2035. Alula's airport has been renovated and there is a luxury hotel designed by a French architect scheduled to open in 2024. The Nabataeans are an important civilization in the region and its legacy can be seen in Hegra, but 10 other historical languages have also been discovered in the region. Alula is considered an important region in the development of the Arabic language. An ancient civilization called Harappa has been found that flourished around 300 BC. In what is now Pakistan and India, Indian scientists working in the Gulf of Kambat suggest that the Harappans descended from an advanced mother culture that was submerged by rising sea levels at the end of the last ice age. The discovery of this submerged civilization demonstrated the existence of an ancient civilization and has established the possibility that ancient civilizations were submerged by rising sea levels after the last ice age. The oldest city-state civilization is believed to have existed in Mesopotamia about 5,500 years ago. Furthermore, an extensive mature civilization has been found on the border of India, Pakistan and Afghanistan called the Harappan civilization, which existed between 5300 and 2800 years ago. Important ruins have been discovered in India, including cities with straight streets, drainage and well-constructed water transportation systems. The artifacts found indicate that there was an important missing link between the ancient hunter-gatherers and the Harappan civilization. Archaeologists believe this missing link may have been submerged by a significant rise in sea level caused by melting ice sheets. 
India's National Institute of Ocean Technology has conducted marine surveys and discovered square rectangular features that appear to be human-made and are believed to have been part of the submerged Harappan civilization. Two ancient canals were discovered in the Kumbhat area 20 kilometers from the current coast, using technological equipment that creates images of the seabed. Features similar to a habitation structure were identified on both sides of the canal in a grid pattern, indicating that the ancients had a good sense of urban planning. Beneath a few centimeters of thin marine sediment, alluvium and pebbles typical of terrestrial river sediments were observed, followed by typical river conglomerates at greater depth, demonstrating that the now submerged area was once dry land with rivers running through it.